this is Chris. Welcome back, everyone. We're continuing to spotlight the 1956 Topps football set today. And the first card we're going to look at is card number 13, Vic Janowitz of the Washington Redskins. Again, all the Redskin cards were short prints, and both the Redskins and Cardinal cards are actually more difficult to find today in high grade because they are short prints, but also because of their location on the uncut sheets. In 1956, Tops designated each row for a particular team. So you would have all one team on one row, then another team on another row. Now the Redskins were located at the top of the sheet and the Cardinals were located at the very bottom of the sheet. So they were very susceptible to damage just in general handling of the sheets before they even got cut into individual cards. Now, as a matter of fact, uh, there are several Redskin cards that have no 9s or 10s on the PSA population report. And this particular card of Janowitz has no 9s or 10s and only has 18 8s that have ever been graded. Again, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the green background on these cards. I, I think it's a great color scheme for cards in general, but especially with the Washington Redskins uniform. Um, Tops would use this same background color for the 1958 background of the Milwaukee Braves. Janowitz was a Heisman Trophy winner in 1950 for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and he also briefly played baseball for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Just a beautiful card, in my opinion. Now, the next card we're going to look at is card number 14 of Dick Magel of the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the correct pronunciation is Magel. It's not Mogul. And he actually changed his name during his playing days because people kept mispronouncing his name. Now, Magel was involved in one of the most bizarre plays in college football history when his Rice team was playing Alabama in the 1954 Cotton Bowl. Rice was on their own five-yard line, and Magel broke a run down the sideline in front of the Alabama bench, and an Alabama player by the name of Tommy Lewis, who was on the sideline at the time, jumped up with no helmet on and flung himself in front of Magel, tackling Magel as he was running down the sideline for a touchdown. Now, Magel was ultimately awarded a 95-yard uh, touchdown run on that play, and he went on to rush for an incredible 265 yards in that game. Now, I've got a link in the description that shows this just crazy, bizarre play in college football history. I think it's amazing that we still have footage of that, and I'm happy that it still exists. So check that out if you get a chance. That's, again, in the bottom at the, in the uh, description. Now, the next card we're going to look at is card number 15 of Fran Rogel of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, a lot of people have not heard of Fran Rogel, and th this is one of the reasons why I really enjoy doing this channel, is because I don't believe people like Fran Rogel should be forgotten in the NFL. He's not Frank Gifford, and he's not Otto Graham, but he was a great player for the Steelers in the 1950s, and he actually embodied what an NFL football player was in the 1950s. And thankfully, there are still some highlights of Pittsburgh Steeler games from the 1950s, and you get to see him in action and, and get to see what he really contributed to those teams. Now, also, I'm linking another YouTube video in the description that does a great job of describing his career, and they have some interview footage with him as well as some of his ex-teammates. Now, also, he has an interesting 1960 Fleer football card. It shows him um, in a New York Titans uniform, but from everything I can see, he never played for them, never had any tie to the organization, uh, stopped playing in the NFL in 1957, and I believe he played a year or two in the CFL, but was then done with football. So I'm not sure why he was in that set and why he was in a New York Titans uniform. If anybody knows the answer to that, feel free to leave it in the comments. I'd really be interested in learning about that. Now, the next card we have is card number 16 of Hal Giancinelli of the Philadelphia Eagles. I couldn't find out too much about his career. He, he had a short NFL career of four years, and 1956 was his last year in the NFL. But what I do love about this card is I love the Eagle logo up in the left-hand corner, and I also love the orange background that, that Topps chose for the Philadelphia Eagle cards this year. I think it's just a great looking color for this particular card. Now these last two cards are two of my favorite 
cards in the set, and also two of my favorite football players from the 1950s. The first one is card number 17, Emlyn Tunnell of the New York Giants. This is just a great looking card with the, with the red background and those old blue Giants jerseys. And I think it just looks great against that, that bright red background. It's just a beautiful card. And it's just a great football pose as he's leaning on one knee, kind of looking off into the distance. This is a wonderful pose in my opinion. Uh, now, one of the things I like collecting is I like to collect cards of players who win championships for particular years or they have career accomplishments for a particular year. And in 1956, the New York Giants beat the Chicago Bears in the NFL championship. And Emlyn Tunnell was a big part of, of that great team. I mean, they just had an incredible, incredible defense that year. And he was a big reason why they won the NFL championship that year. Now, not only was Tunnell a great football player, but he was a great person as well. When he was in college in a football game, he broke his neck. And, and that injury actually caused him to get rejected by both the Army and the Navy when he tried to enlist during World War II. Now, eventually he would enlist in the Coast Guard and he was twice awarded the silver life-saving medal for saving two men's lives on two different occasions. Once when a Japanese torpedo hit their ship that they were on, he put out the, the fire, one of his shipmates caught on fire and he put out the fire with his own hands, burning his own hands and he ultimately carried the man to safety. He also once jumped into, uh, to, into the freezing ocean to rescue a man who had fallen overboard and was drowning. Now, Tunnell was the first black player that was ever signed by the New York Giants, as well as to play for the New York Giants. And actually, he hitchhiked to New York to ask one of the Mars for a tryout. Now, ultimately, as you know, he did make it. He made the football team. And Tunnell was, again, he was just a huge part of those great Giants teams of the 1950s that played in multiple NFL championship games. He finished his career with 79 career interceptions, which was a record when he retired. Um, and even today, it still stands as number two behind Paul Krause. He, was, um, he finished his career with the Green Bay Packers and was on Lombardi's first championship Packer team in 1961. When he retired, he became one of the first black NFL assistant coaches in the NFL. And he was also the first black player inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 51 shortly before the 1975 football season got started. If you don't own an Emlyn Tunnell card in your collection, I think it's just a great card to pick up. He's got several cards you can choose from. They're not very expensive in the grand scheme of things when you think about all the things he's accomplished in his career. And again, I just think this is one of the great cards in this set. Just a beautiful looking card. Now, the last card we're going to look at is card number 18 of Tank Younger. Again, a lot of people may not know who this is. Now, I'm a big fan of the 1950s Rams, and Tank Younger is one of my favorite players, and this is one of my favorite cards in the set. Now, his name, Tank, is just what it means. He would run you over. He was the Earl Campbell of the 1950s. Now, I love the way this yellow jersey looks with this red background. It's just a beautiful looking card in my opinion. And in fact, Younger has some of the most beautiful cards out there, especially some of his Bowman cards. He's just, for whatever reason, he's just got some great looking cards. And if you don't own one of his cards in your collection, again, you can pick them up really inexpensive. And it's just a great card to add to your collection. Now, he was the first black player from an HBCU school to play in the NFL. He was a two-way player playing both fullback and linebacker and was the first black all-pro linebacker in the NFL. He would also later become the first black GM in the NFL when he was named GM for the San Diego Chargers in 1975. Again, this is just a great-looking card of a great player who has a great place in NFL history. And I think it's just a great card to add to your collection or any Tank Younger card for that matter. I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something today. Until next time, take care.